Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we are looking at a very ambitious collaborative project from Udo Dirk Schneider and the German military concert band entitled We Are One. Have y'all ever noticed that as some metal bands get older and older, they also start to become more and more fascinated with the symphonic metal subgenre? I mean, you got Paradise Loss, who in 2015 re-recorded a bunch of their hits with the Plovdiv Philharmonic Orchestra for the Symphony of the Lost record. You've got Scorpions, reigning titans of 80s rock, who re-recorded a bunch of their hits with the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra for the 2000 compilation Moment of Glory. And then you have Metallica, arguably the diff definitive metal band who have played and recorded with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra not once, not twice, not even thrice, but on four separate occasions, all for the SM live album and concert film series, the latest entry of which is expected to arrive this August. Even Udo's former band Accept recorded a live symphonic metal album at Vok in 2017, later releasing it under the name Symphonic Terror. I can't really say that I know why older metal bands are so obsessed with recreating all of their most famous songs with the help of a symphony orchestra, but I can tell you that that is not what Udo and the German military concert band are doing on We Are One. They haven't simply added some strings and horns to tracks like Go Back to Hell or Fast as a Shark. They have made an original studio album that is equal parts symphonic metal and Udo's own brand of gnarly meat and potatoes classic German metal, acting almost as a concept album asking for substantial changes in our society, preaching unity, even peace. It is a far cry from the hyper-macho, literally balls-to-the-wall metal sound of Udo's past. And perhaps of all the projects we've mentioned so far, probably the most difficult to take seriously. Not so much because of the symphonic metal influence itself, but rather how it is implemented into Udo's own signature style. Sometimes they go together as smoothly as chicken and waffles, like on numbers like Love and Sin, and Forever is the reason why. With the former track Love and Sin borrowing a kind of symphonic power metal swagger, I would argue on par with some early Ailstorm, while the latter track, Future's The Reason Why, has a very traditional Russian folk kind of bounce and groove to it. Even tracks like Rebel Town and We Are One are able to provide the more straightforward heavy metal thrills that are normally expected of Udo's material. The latter track in particular, We Are One, really does sound like a classic Accept song that somehow magically got meshed with a classic Nightwish song. But unfortunately, as time goes on and the album gets bigger, more dynamic, and more ambitious, it also starts to get a little sillier, a little cornier. These styles, very rapidly and noticeably, just don't gel together the same way they did in the beginning. And soon these ideas don't go nearly as well together as chicken and waffles. Uh, more like orange juice and toothpaste, or pineapple and pizza. Okay, to be fair, for some reason people actually like pineapple on pizza. But th the point is... The album eventually just kind of falls apart. Take for instance Children of the World, which feels like a very ponderous and half-baked attempt at recreating the heartwarming energies of 80s charity bands like USA for Africa and Hearing Aid. Or the genuinely irritating neoclassical bagpipe leads of Beyond Gravity. Like, w why is, does this motherfucker sound like he's trying to play like Yingve Malmsteen on, on bagpipes? No one wants that. No one asked for that. And while Udo's vocals aren't really bad per se, it is within these very adventurous moments that his vocals do create a very ugly and unappealing contrast. Take for instance on the cut Neon Diamond, which is an absolutely hilarious, cheesy as fuck attempt at creating a genuine and sincere power ballad. Sappy as holy hell, overproduced, plastered with synths and saxophone parts, it's Blech. It's like if somebody tried to fuse together Careless Whisper from George Michael and Dance Macabre from Ghost, but they got a fucking cave troll to sing on it. Or on the absolutely cringeworthy funk metal meets rap meets Broadway music flows of Here We Go Again. And no, folks, you did not hear me incorrectly at all. Like, this sounds like somebody took, like, really early Red Hot Chili Peppers and tried to make, like, a Broadway production out of it. It's... 
It's fucking terrible. Hands down the worst moment on the record. To be entirely fair, Udo's very gruff, nasally, goblin-like snarls are inherently very tough to infuse with a genre so inherently lavish and melodramatic. I mean, you can even hear that for yourself on opening track Pandemonium, where he goes from a really low, monotone, kind of gruff voice into sounding like Brian Johnson deep-throating a pack of cigarettes. Just like, to in like a matter of fucking seconds. But these particular tracks in which Udo is pulled so far out of his comfort zone that it doesn't even sound like the vision you're aiming for, they don't help. They don't help one fucking bit. And folks, it's hard not to be all the more confused and peeved with these numbers when you look at the album's runtime. Like, why is this thing an hour and 14 minutes? If you had cut these numbers like Neon Diamond, like Beyond Gravity, like Here We Go Again, not only would you have a more consistent style across the album, not only would you be forcing Udo into some genuinely alienating territory, but you would just have a more cohesive package all around, a more uniform, concise album. Before I give you the final score, I want to reiterate that I very much appreciate and admire everything that Udo and the German military concert band are trying to do on this album. It's got heart, it's got soul, it's ambitious, it's consistently, genuinely kind of interesting, it's also consistently, genuinely kind of unpredictable. Like, I never thought in my life I would ever hear Udo Dirkschneider rap, but now I have. And on a purely technical level, this is actually a very well-produced record. I'm honestly amazed just how balanced and even everything is in the final mix. But unfortunately, I think they just get a little bit too adventurous for their own good. They get too overdramatic. They get too over the top. They get too cheesy, too ridiculous. As a result, even in these albums' best moments, it just doesn't really feel like these two musical planets should align. It, it just doesn't. So unfortunately, I'm gonna give this a 1.5 out of 5. Truthfully, I don't want to. Truthfully, I'd love to be more positive, but in doing so, I would ignore that I was unironically kind of laughing at this thing at times, that I found it genuinely sappy, that I found it genuinely overdramatic and, and over the top, and bombastic, too much so for its own good. I'd be ignoring that I genuinely did cringe quite a few times throughout this album, and that even in its best songs, I was still rolling my eyes and giggling silently to myself. I have absolutely no idea if Udo plans to make another record like this, but if he is, I ask him, please, fucking please, scale down. Refocus on the sound that made you who you are and infuse that with symphonic metal. Because if you continue in this exact direction, I promise you my adoration will not be able to follow you there. So uh, 1.5 out of 5, this thing's it's fucking bad. Um, but if you're looking for something really crazy and insane to sink your teeth into, you might have some fun with this in little small doses. And that is it! For the Metal Meltdown, I'm not an expert nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking immediately, and you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.